So, introduce myself. I'm David, co-founder and CEO of Nex. Nex builds motion games with cameras and AI. I know what you guys are thinking. Motion games, again? Well, we are not the first company that build motion games. There was the Wii in 20, 2006, which sold over 100 million units. And then the Kinect in 2010, which at that time was the fastest selling consumer device. And then we had an Oculus starting 2015, and most games in VR essentially motion games. So many people kept trying. Why? First, it's a physical immer immersion. There's something in playing sports or dancing that engages your full body, and people are craving for it. Second, motion game gets moving, and that's obviously really good for your bodies. And that will take games to new audience. Third, motion is very natural and approachable. And using motion to play games has been a human second nature. The controllers is quite intimidating to many. But motion games so far have always required sensor in your hands, has on your head, sometimes both, or even involve like very bulky peripherals attached to your console. And that will limit reach for all the motion games we have before us. Next, we want to take a different approach. We want to take motion games to everybody, vastly increase its reach. And we take on a mission to help humanity rediscover the joy of movement, turning screen time into active play time, and transforming living rooms into playgrounds. OK? But how? Let's do a deep dive into the tech. We figured out tech quite early. In 2018, Apple put us on stage when iPhone XS reached the breakthrough performance to allow us to process video in real time, track motion 30 frame per second. And since then, that level of processing power is reaching more and more devices. iOS and Androids, phones, and tablets, Macs, and PCs. But most importantly, that level of processing power and cameras have begun to reach the living room to big screen TV, where motion game will have the best experience. I'm not talking about the game console here. I'm talking about the next generation camera-enabled TVs and set -up box. I'm predicting that we have an iPhone moment happening in this category where a TV and set box would have processing power it evolved and became a generic compute platform and allow all kinds of applications, most importantly, games, to work on them. And it's happening. Sony have started shipping smart camera with some of the TV last year, and some of our games have begin to work on it. Sky, a major media telecom com telecommunication company in the UK, a leading innovator in this space, has announced a smart camera device that will bring interactive content to their Sky Glass TV. Next is Sky's motion game content provider. This is a reference hardware that our partner SCI Robotics built for GoPro operators. A camera-enabled Android TV setup box. An early prototype of this device is showcased in last year's Android TV Summit. And of course, our games run there very smoothly. With the tech becoming more widely accessible, we start building the tools. Meet MDK, Motion Developer Kit. A new network architecture and motion development toolkit that integrate directly into Unity. Packing together five years of our experience and R&D of building motion games into one package. It has four key features. Motion tracking, of course, cross-platform, optimized performance, and game development ready. First, motion tracking. It works with a standard RGB camera attached to a device you probably already own. It tra extracts 18-point human pose from a single player or multiple player that's tracking, automatically identify and track the active player from the crowd. Second, it supports multiple platforms. We already published games on iOS and Android already. And we're taking some of our games to PC and Mac later this year. And we 
you're also actively supporting to bringing uh, out games to the next generation TV and set-up box. We are want to allow your creation of motion games, the rich billions of devices today, and many more in the future. We also optimize every step of the way in the whole pipeline to lower action to feedback latency. It's how we accelerate it. So we use Core ML on Apple device and an API on Android, and also support like render specific MPU drivers for selected devices as well. We even deploy different ML models to achieve different accuracy to performance of compromises. Any millisecond we can shave, we'll, work out, we'll, work, we'll go ahead and try to shave them and deliver better performance. The best part is we want to abstract everything of these from you so that content, content creator, game developers can fully focus on their content. And most importantly, it's game development ready. It's integrated in Unity. We provide you to solve all the common problems that building motion game would need to solve, like helping users how to set up. In addition to the raw and filter human post notes, we also do action recognition as well, so they're basically making it very, very easy to create games. The best part is always getting better, because we are game developer too, we eat our own dog food, and we use it to build games. And let's take a quick peek of the games we created with the tools. Party Foul is a two-player party game with a goal to make you look really goofy and put a smile on your face. Let's take a look. You can see how we attract all the players, but we don't join the cloud. Second is Starry, it's a music rhythm game. Music and motion is such a good match. And we'll get to su support from some of the biggest artists to build this game with their music. On just an iPad or PC, we real-time translate your body into a 3D avatar and get you to dance. I want to take a pause here to share a personal story. I've been in tech for over 20 years and my mom never understood what I'm doing. After I shipped Starry last year, she became one of the most active users on Starry. And every weekend in our FaceTime call, we talk about this game. I record it so far will be my biggest achievement so far and my highlight, the highlight of my career. Peppa Pig Jump and Giggle, we partnered with Hasbro to bring motion gaming to one of their most iconic brands, Peppa Pig. And this game, Look bring the family together to have a game. as well. Which game would you like? And also got the app of the day last weekend as well. Look at all those puppies. Dance must stop measure. We create a goalkeeper game that gets you keep goals from first person perspective. And if the way to build a goalkeeper game is to be like this. And people playing our games a lot. The engagement of games grew every year in the last five years and we are serving millions of users. But we are merely scratching the surface of what is possible with the tech. We don't have all the answers, and we cannot do it all by ourselves. So here, if you're a game developer, we'd like to invite you to build a motion game with Nix. And we already started. <laughs> so this is Air Razor by Berlin-based Skeleton. It's a flight simulation game which you can use two hands to control the plane. Mofit Boxing by Hong Kong based Fight for Dream will take you through a boxing workout. And New Witch by New Zealand based Cookie Crayon. It's a spell casting power defense game which instantly become a hit in my life. With my six years old, with telling me like how I remember all the spell already to it. Is it pretty awesome? So one of the reference with me today, Matthias Terroso, a award-winning game designer. Is known for his passion for exploring new technology and pushing creative boundaries. Matthias created Fru, 
a game that critics call the Kinect Killer App. Also one of the highest rated Xbox exclusive of 2016. That's why we get in touch with Natia. We want to work with him to create a motion, the future motion game together. Natia. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? All right, cool. Well, it's so cool to see that the, you're working with developers all over the world. Clearly, as an Italian, I'm the authority on gestures. So that's why I'm talking with you. And also because I'm, I made this game here. It's called Fru. It was released in 2016. And it's a puzzle game that uses your body to solve like puzzles and enigmas, right? We use your silhouette that we capture with a Kinect and you use the silhouette as a mask, right? It reveals what lies beneath in a way. And Fru really made me love motion tracking because we often talk about motion games as having no controller, but they actually have 18 controllers. Like this is a controller, this is a controller, right? There is so much data and the player can really be expressive with what they do with their body. Like it's kind of hard, but bear with me and try to pretend you don't know what a human looks like and look at that shape. It's kind of complex, right? If we had to break it down into like basic geometric shapes, it would look something like this. And controlling that with a controller would require like this monstrosity, which, okay, to be fair, it looks kind of cool, but you probably need like five PhD to use. So I can just do this. Okay, I don't have the grace of the dancer that's portrayed in the silhouette, but the nice thing is with our body, we can just express so many shapes, right? It's kind of like a controller that gives us super fine-tuned input, and we don't have to teach players to use it because they already know how, right? They've been using their whole life. And this allows us to create completely different puzzles. I'm gonna go back to Fru for just a second. So that's your character, right? And you have to get there. And there's this spikes in the way. Again, the mechanic of the game is that only what's inside the silhouette is visible. And this allows us to create a puzzle like this, where the player is using their leg and their arm to jump past the spike, right? It's quite complex even to describe it, but when you see it, it's immediately clear. But what about this one, where you can use your body to carve a hole where you can be safe from that sword? The wonderful thing about this stuff, really, is that players can have this organic, rich inputs. Like games are a conversation between the player and its systems, right? And depending on what the player can say, that conversation is different. And thanks to the motion developer kit that Next provided me, I was able to make this. So you can see Unity. Yes, you can see Unity. That's nice. So if I press play, you'll see in real time, that is tracking my body. There might be a little delay with the TV, but there isn't here for me. And the nice thing is I can take all of these nodes and turn it from this to this. Now, you can still see my gesture, <laughs> and it's quite smooth, right? This is a, it's called Juggler. It's a very simple physics-based puzzle game where you have to bring this little dude to the star, right? And you can do it in many different ways. I also have a very tall hat, so I have to be careful not to hit it with the hat. Yeah, there you go. And the nice thing about this is that truly you can be, you can find different ways to solve the puzzle. Like you can, you can build this like valley here. Whoops. <laughs> you can build a valley to carry the dude around like this, like so. Or you can throw it, you can use the hat. I'm just gonna solve this level. The beauty of doing live demos is that of course something goes wrong every time. And since I'm using my body, again, I was talking about creative solutions. Like I can build a sort of arc where the little dude is sliding, right? Or I can just juggle with it first. I can use my shoulders, there you go, and get into the star, right? And the thing that's most interesting to me is that we don't have to use the body one to one. Like in this level, I'm just using my shoulders. Again, games are a conversation between input and systems. By changing the input, we change what the game is about. Here, I cannot use my hands to juggle the little dude. I have to use my shoulders. So I have to do this motion, for instance, to get the little guy to the star. 
and hopefully I will not make a fool of myself live here at GDC, but, oh no, <laughs> okay, and we got it. But what about this one, right? Here, it's even more complex because I'm using my shoulder and my hands, right? And that, again, completely changes how I'm playing the game. Like I can do this, or I can juggle between the two hands, right? And we, when we change the control system, the game changes with it. And I have one last example. In this one, I'm connecting my hands, right, with this, with this bar. Sorry, the screen has turned dark for a second. There we go. And the, I have such fine-tuned controls with this. Once again, it's a, it could be its own game, right? And <laughs> here we go. And again, like all of these puzzles are only possible because we have a new language to play with, right? And fundamentally, the nice thing is that this is just Unity physics. It's really, really simple. There isn't anything here that's like super complex. I know nothing about machine learning, and yet I press play and it works. And I'm just gonna show you a sample scene. Here, this scene is very simple. There's just two game objects here. There are two cubes, and they're in the scene. And they have the script attached to them that's called a motion node controller. You see it to the right. And the motion node controller is connected to my right hand. You can read it here. And this one is, con is uh, connected to my left hand. So now, if I press play, again, I can attach the script to any game object. See, the cubes are just following my hands. But I can even change it live, and I can take one of the cubes, like the right hand one, and instead of following my right hand, I could follow, for instance, my nose. And now, it's following my nose, right? It's super simple, and ultimately, it's just vectors. It's just positions. It's up to you to take it and build the game that you want. I'm very excited to see what you all come up with. And if you want to talk game design, motion-based game design, or just game design, I'll be at the next booth. Uh, thank you so much for listening to me. David, back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mattia. This is awesome, right? <laughs> so we talk about a few things. Why of the motion game and how we take it in mainstream and take it to a living room. What we have built, we have built tools, we have built games to demonstrate like how what how it can be done. We're actually so excited about this new category and also how this game can now eventually really run just on your TV, on a you know, camera enabled TV inside the box in the living room. But we can't wait. So what if we build a device that reminds people moving is fun and use that to accelerate the industry at the same time? Would people fall in love with it? Introducing next playground a device that we are building to bring your motion game to your living room. I'm going to leave a big teaser here. We actually have a real product here, which is a model. And to learn more about it, we, had, uh, we have a booth in GDC. So come visit us in the South Hall. And we'd love to build motion games together with you guys. Thank you.